So my name is Claire Donovan and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to provide an introduction to biocuration. Why am I someone to talk about biocuration? I'm a team leader of protein function content team at the Embel EBI. So there's 16 biocurators in my team working on expert and automatic curation for Unipro Gene Ontology Annotation Project and the Enzyme Portal. And I've been doing this job a very long time. I was originally hired as an annotator in the Swiss Park team at Embo Heidelberg right back in 1993. So I've really seen this grow from a very niche activity into something that's a full-blown career. And I would like to share my thoughts about bi-curation with you. The link there is to my team page where you can learn more about what my group does if you're interested. This is an unusual talk for the EBI training because it's not really a training, it's more telling you about the field of biocuration. So the scope of it is to give you an introduction to the concept of biocuration, the different kinds of biocurators and the skill set needed, and to tell you a bit about our community and the future, as I see it, it's a personal opinion, of biocuration and the various career paths. So to start at the beginning, how do we define by curation and the aims of it? So this comes from a definition comes from the Society, International Society for Biocuration. And biocuration involves the interpretation and integration of information relevant to biology into a database or resource that enables integration of the scientific literature as well as large data sets. But to summarize, our focus is the accurate and comprehensive representation of biological knowledge and to provide easy access to this data for working scientists and as a basis for computational analysis. Those are our goals. But what's really exciting about this field is that biocuration is achieved thanks to the convergent activities of biocurators, software developers, and researchers in bioinformatics. So it's a really multidisciplinary field which is really exciting to work in. We're very lucky here at Embo EBI to have all facets of this, but there are many institutes around the world where this is also facilitated and also within our community, but I'll tell you more about that later. What's really important to realize is that biocurators provide essential resources to the biological community. Databases have become an integral part of what wet lab researchers use on a daily basis. This was not the way it was back in 1993 when I started, but it totally is now. We know from our web hits on our database, for instance, that people come and look at our entries, our records, numerous times a day. So if we come to what a bi-curator is, I'd really like to stress, this is the definition from Wikipedia, that we're professional scientists. And we are scientists. Most of us have a wet lab background, and have then, for various reasons, moved into a new career. We cur curate, collect, annotate, and validate information, which is then disseminated by the databases. The key words there I'd like you to focus on is curates and validates. You are required to be a scientist. You do not just report what other people have said. You use your knowledge to collate the information together and make a conclusion that's useful for the scientific community. So if we define the role, quality control, using your background, using your knowledge, is critical. Understanding the original scientific literature and making sense of it, organizing it in a way that other people can use it, is a prime part of this role. It is also <coughs> An essential part to describe this data with standard annotation protocols and vocabularies. All of you who are scientists who read papers, you know that one scientist can call the same thing lots and lots of different ways. By putting it all together in a standard way, everyone can use it and understand it, and it allows powerful queries and biological database interoperability. This is really important in this world where there's so many databases and so many people working on essential data all around the world. We need to be able to communicate together in a way that we all understand. The other really nice aspect of this job is that you get to communicate with researchers to ensure the accuracy of the curated information. This varies across the different 
uh, resources. But I thoroughly encourage it in my group that we reach out to the experimentalists in their labs. We go to their conferences. We talk to them about the data. It helps us have insights into the latest technologies and the areas of expertise. And I know other databases do this too, in particular the model organism databases. We've been called many things during my time period as a curator. So scientific curators, data curators, annotators, or data wranglers is a really popular name in the States. Maybe it's the Wild West influence. But I started out as an annotator in the MBL, and a couple of years later I got promoted to being a curator. They changed my title so that they could make us professional and pay us a bit more money. So titles matter. But basically, the job is an exciting one. I use this slide which shows the links from Uniprot to lots of other databases to highlight the fact that there are lots of different resources around the world working in very different fields of biology and chemistry and physics structures. And so there's lots of different curators that work in these areas. And they've all different aspects of expertise. So this is a slide I used to describe what curators in my group and other parts of the Uniprot Consortium do. We capture all the information about one particular protein, the sequence, the function, the name, and we use ontologies, and we capture all the literature information. It's completely and utterly comprehensive. Everything you need to know about that protein is going to be in here or in the specialized resources we link out to. The Gene Ontology, which is another project my group is involved in, is a different way, and we, our curators do this as well. It provides a beautiful index, short, synoptic, to the point, either granular or more less specific, about using just the terms, no sentences, just words, to explain what is going on in the paper. All different aspects to bio-curation. Another critical thing is that, like I said, we all have different fields where we are the experts. It is the prime activity not to duplicate each other's work, but to collaborate together and to work together to provide the best thing for all our users. So an example of that, for instance, is the HGNC group, who are the experts in giving gene names to human uh, genes. We import that data. We trust them and we use it. And they import back data from us as well. That's the way the community works. As an example, these are all the databases that my team works with as part of the Gene Ontology Consortium. It makes for a lovely environment. You learn a lot about stuff outside your field, as well as things that may be relevant for you to also reuse in your resource. Share is a key word. So, I've introduced the concept that there are many different aspects of being a bio-curator. Many of these things started out like I did in a small group of four people with no programming support <laughs> at all. And it was all about our biology. And we made it up as we went along. Now, bio-curation is a career. But so far, unfortunately, there is no official qualification for bio-curation. So each team has to train people in the very basic of concepts when they arrive into their group. Through the Campus Curators Forum here on the Welcome to uh, Campus, we got together all different kinds of curators at the EBI and the Sanger and talked about what were the basic skills that we thought a bio-curator should have. And I'd like to share those with you. So the first is the basics of biodata, introducing the diverse range of data available and the need for harvesting and storing this data. We'd really love to develop a training procedure that would give these skills that would teach people in advance so that we could then hire them and only teach the expert things that are necessary for the individual resources. So this basic curation skills. There's programming concepts. Even it will depend on the resource that you go to work for, whether you will need to be a programmer or not. In my group, most of the curators don't because we are 
fully complementary with another team that has expert software engineers. But in other groups, you will need to have programming. But in any case, it's advantageous because you're working with programmers and it's really good to understand what they're trying to tell you and to communicate back to them in words that they actually understand. They hate the word exception, for instance. Other thing is understanding databases. Again, working with those programmers, you need to understand how your data will be stored so that you can get it back in the way that you want it and that people can use it and mine it in the best way. I've mentioned already the concept of ontologies and control vocabularies. It's essential to make your data used by others. Not only our user community, but the wider bio-curation and um, biological community. When I first started out in SwissProt, UniProt as we evolved to be, we distributed our data on a floppy disk. That's how long ago it was. Now we have a website. Now we distribute databases. So there's all issues about database access and use from a user perspective. Understanding how people access our data and how to present it to them in a way that they can fully understand it. That's another essential skill set. There's no use in you curating beautiful data and nobody using it. In today's world, where so much of the big data is actually personal data, one particular area of development is biomedical data, people's personal health records. It's really important as a biocurator that you understand the ethical and legal framework of internationally and in your home country of origin around the data that you're working with. Again, it's wonderful if you're doing beautiful annotation, but if nobody's using it, that's not great. So as a bio-curator, you're also responsible for communicating and engaging with the stakeholder groups, the users, the publishers, and of course, funders. Somebody needs to pay us. But it is a critical part of your role. And finally, you need to train people how to use your data. Basic user training concepts are essential. Many of us are lucky enough in certain institutes to have a dedicated user training base, but other resources are too small and isolated and need to train themselves. And in some cases, you're just the most best person to do the training anyway because you're the one doing the work all day. But finally, finally, in this era of big data, providing a background in statistics is critical. Back in the day, you published one gene at a time, and you could focus on it and understand everything about it. Now you get entire genomes, and you really need to be able to understand what is statistically uh, relevant and what is just noise. There is a lot of noise out there in the big data. To tell you a bit about our community, so there is an international society for biocuration. It was founded in 2008, which is not that long ago. It's a non-profit organization for bio-curators, developers, and researchers with an interest in bio-curation. It promotes the field, and it provides a forum for information exchange through meetings and workshops and newsletters. So I've put the link there. Go and explore it. It'll tell you a lot about the field. It'll tell you about jobs as well. It'll tell you about um, meetings that are coming up, newsletters about different resources. But one of its main activities is a yearly conference that we organize. Currently, there's about 350 people in the uh, society, and about 300 of us, on average, get together every year. This year, uh, it is in Geneva, Switzerland, in April, the 10th to the 14th of April. You don't need to be a bio-curator already to attend this conference. You can uh, just register as a student or as someone from industry and just come along and see what it is. As a stroke of luck, we're also celebrating 30th anniversary of SwissProt, the database I started in all those years ago. Um, SwissProt is a collaboration between uh, the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics in Geneva, uh, here at BI, and PIR at the University of Georgetown and Delaware in the States. And we're all going to have a very nice party um, in April in Geneva. I've put a link there to the bio-curation conference we had in China last year, and all the talks are linked, 
So you can explore them and see the kind of field that it is and the kind of work that is being done. And I've also put a link to this year's activities. One of the things that we will be doing this year, uh, um, a few of us are organizing a workshop on the training need for bio-curation. Sorry for the heavy text, but I wanted to capture exactly what, what we are intending to do. We're passionate about developing a professional qualification for our field, both to recognize the people already in the field and also, as I said, to train people coming into it freshly. So this workshop is intended to discuss the training that bio-curators should have along the lines of what I showed earlier and the role that the society that I'm an executive member of should contribute in this field. All of this will be on the website after the conference and it is possible if there's demand that I'd be happy to produce a summary um, through this forum again of the outcomes of that meeting. But I encourage you to follow it if you're interested in any way in bio-curation. So, coming on to the future of bio-curation. It's a very exciting time. It is one fact that one of the reasons I'm still a bio-curator, moving from a very niche position, it was something you did for a year while you were deciding about your future after years of doing academia, it is now a full-blown career. And during that time, things constantly changed, which is why I love my job. But right now, in the last couple of years, it is constantly changing, and there's only future challenges. So existing databases, like mine, and the bio-curators continue to evolve in response to the big data. And it makes it a really enjoyable job. But also, there's a serious recognition of industry and governments for the need for curation. There was a period a few years ago where they said there would be no need for curators. The programmers and algorithms and automation could replace us, and we'd be obsolete. Of course, we didn't believe them, and we just waited. And swings and roundabouts, as usual, happened. And now you hear Phil Bourne, head of the NIH, saying the world uh, by curators are absolutely essential. So that's really helpful for the future of our field. So to give you a couple of examples of how it's evolving, one of the projects that I'm involved with is the Center for Target Validation, CTTV. This is um, a collaboration between the Embel EBI, the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute, GSK, and Biogen, working together two industry partners and two res uh, research institutes to try and develop drug targets. So my curators are curating the literature like they always do, but focusing on particular areas of disease and understanding from the people in the research wet lab in the Sanger Center and the production wet labs and research labs in the um, industry to develop protocols and exploration plans with the view to have an outcome of a successful drug. I have found this an incredibly enjoyable experience. On the one hand, there were some, it was quite disappointing that we had lots of data that they weren't even aware of. Now they are, and it's really um, rewarding to help them move forward with um, drug development. We also have the benefit that the, all of this data that we curate goes public. It's not in-house, hidden in a pharmaceutical company. It's public for everybody. And that is a key point, I think, as a bio-curator. Other aspects to recognize how important bio-curation is to governments is that last year, 2015, the National Research Council in USA and other of their agencies spent time researching the area of what was the future for what they call digital curation. By curation is one component of that. I've put the link to the outcome of their report. It's really fascinating. And if you're interested in the idea of by curation as a career, it can show you all the different possible career paths and the need for what they see, the need for training. They also analyze the economic benefits and the importance in society uh, for digital curation. I encourage you to read it. 
Um, it's really helped me have the vocabulary to tell my family what it is I've done for the last bunch of years, which is really hard to explain what it is that we do. And this is a lovely um, way to do that. Another really lovely career path you can take in bio-curation is working within the health system. So here in the UK, the National Health System, the NHS, um, are trying very hard to move into the field of personalized medicine data. NIH in the USA is trying to, National Institute of Health, are also doing the same. The states are ahead of it because they already have electronic health records. But there are still a lot of challenges. So one of the curators that used to work with me is now working at Addenbrooke's University Hospital here in Cambridge, which is one of the biggest teaching hospitals in Europe. And her job is to talk to all the different medical professionals that may be involved with a patient and collate the data together in a way that it all interoperates. It's really crucial that you may be going to see somebody about your heart, but you could be going to see another medical professional about your kidneys. And the fact that they don't talk to each other is really important that you can see all of this data in one way. It's a challenge to get medical professionals to talk to, get to each other, but it is a bio-curation role. It en enables complete overview of the patient to give the best prognosis, and also to follow the progression through life, to s which will teach us how to treat the next generation of patients. She's thoroughly enjoying this challenge. I had the pleasure of attending a conference last September organized by the NIH in Washington, D.C., which brought together clinicians and people like me to talk to, about using those electronic health records. It's really important that we, and that brings us back to the words of ontologies, it's really important that we all use the same words, that we mine the data and that we share the data to make sure that the patients get the best treatment. And it's a really exciting area on both sides of the pond and throughout the world, I'm sure. And on a final personal note, and there is a future bio-curation in my group. I have an open position. If you would like to apply, the link is there. I have also put the link to the EBI job page because there are other bio-curation jobs open at the moment. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>